Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. The, today, welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing a real simple build. This is going to be a wooden cross. We were contacted recently. Uh, a gentleman, he just showed up here at the place and he asked me, he said, hey, he said, I understand you do woodworking and y'all also do leather work too. And I was like, yes sir, that's what we do. And he kind of described what he was wanting and he was wanting to order a couple of these for Christmas. And essentially, all you're going to need for this project is a couple of scrap pieces of wood, a couple of scrap pieces of leather, and then uh, if you got some scrap rope laying around, that would be handy. And you can see I've got one of the crosses here without the rope on it. So, I mean, you can kind of look and see if you'd like the rope or not. He was very specific and wanted the rope. The guy has a roping background and I think that that meant a lot more to him even though this isn't a lariat. It's still uh, got that kind of country feel to it. Okay guys, so let's get to the build. It's going to be a real fun build. We'll get out. It gives you a reason to get out in the shop and then this may be something that you can actually make some money with as well. So. What I did when I started doing these projects is I went ahead and made some templates and I did that on purpose so that it would make it go a little bit faster because I could see this being something that I potentially want to add because I can see these being hot sellers. Now with that said, I have already sold almost a dozen of these since I took the first order maybe a month ago. I posted them on Facebook, had several people on Facebook. With Facebook said, I would like to say thanks to Matt Outlaw on 731 Woodworks because the other day they actually did a shout out to us on our wooden leather cross that we made and I, I just want to say thank you I truly appreciate that that was very kind to him to do that but with that said this is an item that I think that you could make in your shop again the cost of materials is not going to be huge it's going to take a little bit of time we're going to be using some power tools in this video because I have them but now bear in mind that everything that we're doing this could all be cut out with a jigsaw, it could be sanded with anything from just a regular old hand sander to even just a board with sandpaper on it. You don't have to have all the tools that we're going to be using. With that said, the patterns, the way that I've made them is I'm, we're going to do a rough cut on the wood and then we're going to take it over to the router table and then we're going to use a flush trim bit or a pattern bit, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to do the final cut that way it'll go much quicker for me since we're trying to do a little bit of production on these and again like say we've sold roughly a dozen of them so that's kind of makes it a little more exciting for you guys that are wanting to do something like this makes great christmas gifts if, as you can see on the ones that we've made they've got a name on them another option that you could do if you was doing craft shows or something like that maybe welcome maybe home uh hope joy I mean, you could think of any other kind of wording. That way, when you're at the craft show, you're not trying to hand stamp somebody's name. Now, the reason I say that you're not going to want to do that at a craft show, if you can see, this top belt is laying over this other belt. So trying to hand stamp that is going to be almost impossible after you've already got the pieces put together. So if you do decide that you're going to hand stamp or take orders on them, you can take the orders and then personalize them much easier before it's put together than after it's put together. So... With that said, like say, if you was going to be doing some craft shows or some other markets like that, I would just do generic stuff and then you could take orders while you was there for this same deal. Now these crosses we've been getting roughly $65 for them. Now that would be up to you on what you want to price them for in your market. But $65 really is not a bad price on an item that's basically handmade. This is hand stamped on the leather that we did and I'm going to walk you through the entire process. So again, we're going to start out with <clears throat> two pieces of wood. We're going to, you're going to see me laying down the template on the wood. I'm going to trace it out. We'll go over to the bandsaw and we're going to do rough cuts. Now, one thing I will tell you when you're doing the rough cuts, and you should be seeing the video of this while I'm explaining. You want to try to stay closer to a sixteenth uh, or an eighth inch away from your line on this. You don't want to be taking a huge, you don't want to hog off a huge amount of wood when you get to the router uh, stage of this where we're going to be using the pattern bit or flush trim bit, whichever one you want to call it. Um, the reason being is you can get some chip out. 
We are going to have some chip out in one of the pieces, and I left that in this video on purpose because when we're when we're done, after we get done with the uh, bandsaw, we're going to smooth it out. Like I say with the patterning bit, we're going to make it a very. It'll be basically straight, and all your angles line up that way. It'll be just like these two pieces here. After we get done with the router table, the next stage that we're going to do is we're going to go back to the table saw and we're going to cut this not quite in half because I've got this basically to where it's 16 and a half inches on purpose but we're going to cut out the essentially the two and a half inches as which is the width of the pattern that way it's still going to be overall this length okay so let's start over so basically you're going to see me using a spacer along with the miter gauge and that's because these tips of the cross stick out past the width of the actual cross member if you will so we've made this spacer so that it's the same height and size as the tips so when you've got your wood on your miter gauge and you make this cut right here you're not gonna your your cross is going to be level instead of it being crooked or whatever the next step after we get it off the router table we've cut the arms um, and we've cut them down to where we're still roughly that 16 and a half to 17 inches wide or whatever it is and we're going to go over to the Craig jig Craig jig is going to be real simple all we're going to do is we're going to drill in two holes into each arm if you will of the cross the two holes after we get it back we're going to set it up on the table and we're going to glue and screw it with the Craig screws I found that to be the easiest way to do it again on a project like this you could actually go in and you could do some fancy joints you could do some miter joints you could do whatever you want I'm just showing you what we're doing because it makes the process much quicker again gluing it and screwing it with the Craig jig and the Craig screws I think will be way more than adequate as far as the strength of the little arms holding up now after we get done with the the arms and we get them put together I'm going to give it a couple hours or so let that glue dry and then we're going to hit it with the sander just make sure if you've got any a major glue squeeze out use a scraper card scraper or even a paint scraper scrape that hard glue off before you run your sander that way you're not messing up a brand new sanding disc getting it cram jam full of glue after we get done with that while we're still at the same table go ahead and throw down a pad we're going to use a chamfer bit and you can set this to whatever size that you want but if you'll notice um, we did get some chip out because I didn't quite cut close enough to the line on purpose so I could show you a possible fix and that's how we fix this one in particular on this build is we used the chamfer bit and went around the edge and once we did that you couldn't tell that there was any chip out from having trying to hog off too much material on the on the pattern bit that we used previously you could also spend more money on the pattern bit the one that we got is just a two blade it's just the cheap 20 30 dollar one that you can buy i know that if you was using a spiral bit or something like that it would be a much cleaner cut you could probably hog off more material but i still wouldn't because it's just going to be more wear and tear on your router your router table or whatever it is that you're going to be using so with that said regardless of the bit try to stay close to your line just don't go inside your cut that way you everything will still line up straight and be straight when you get ready to put it together so after we do the chamfer bit while we're still at the same table we're going to just roll out some paper and we're going to stain that up real quick and then while the stain is drying we'll do a mini cleanup in the shop and then go on out to the leather shop the leather strips that i'm using for this if you guys want to go to tandy or somewhere if, or if you can buy the it's just basically inch and a half belt blank another thing that you could do if you was going to do this maybe as a memorial to somebody that had a belt with their name on it i think it'd be really cool if you use their actual belt for the cross piece on the cross and then you could even use the part of the belt buckle or whatever else i mean you could get as creative as you wanted with this but you could do that on the vertical part and leave the back the buckle hanging down uh, it's just something to think about it would be kind of cool and maybe a maybe a way to memorialize uh, a past friend or relative so there is that aspect to the same build as well that i think would actually be a good way to honor somebody or 
or a little memorial to them or their family or somebody in their family would probably truly appreciate that as well. So it's more than just this wooden gift could mean several things depending on the person. So that's another aspect of what I think is so fun about this idea and I'm glad that he came over and we discussed it and came up with it because I really think it could be a cool tribute to somebody as well. So anyhow, let's go over to the leather shop. I'm, we're not going to spend a great deal of time. I'm not going to teach you how to do hand stamping. I'm just going to show you what we're doing. Like say, it's standard belt material, inch and a half belt, the men's belt. Some of the girls' belts are a little bit skinnier, but a standard men's belt is inch and a half wide. That's what these plans and everything are drawn up basically to fit. So our long piece is 22 and a half inches long for the leather. The actual wood is a little bit longer and you can kind of gauge that. It's roughly roughly a half inch to three quarters of an inch overlay on each end. Same on the, the cross member of the top of the cross. The actual leather from tip to tip 16 and a half inches. So we're going to lay that out real quick while we're in the leather shop. I'm going to cut, I'm going to, cut to pieces using our belt tip cutter. This will be a real quick shout out to our little leather shop. If you guys are interested, we do offer this belt tip cutter on our Etsy page and it's something that we, we cut here in the shop with the laser. And it's uh, it's been a great help for us with making belts. I know we've sold a bunch of them. I've also got a little center ruler on it so that you can use it to help get your center lines set up on stuff as well. Okay, now that we've got the leather stamped, we're going to move on over real quickly. We're just going to do, again, this isn't a how to stain leather video. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of overlaying the, the, the stain so that I can kind of shade it a little bit. That's up to you how you want to do it. I know that when I built my crosses, if you notice on the one that says Manus, they're typically seven inches from the tip down is where the arm is. So I kind of shaded it so that you could kind of get a starburst effect, if you will, with the stain on the leather. Now that's something that I just did because I thought it looked pleasing to the eye. You could stain it all one color and it wouldn't matter. I don't think anybody would even really notice, but that's what I did and why I did it. And that's the actual measurement that I use. If you'll notice on the other one, it is seven inches to the bottom. I like this look as well. The other one is seven inches to the top of the arm and it's just a personal preference whichever you decide so let's go back into the wood shop we're going to take our leather pieces to us we're this is going to be a real simple process we're using barge rubber cement and we're going to put if you noticed when we did the stain on the wood crosses i put that strip of one inch uh painter's tape down the middle so that i wouldn't get stain in the middle of the cross the wooden cross the reason that I did that is so that the bargs would actually stick a little bit better to the wood as opposed to on top of that oil based stain. I don't know how well that would actually bond. It probably would be fine, but I did. nobody's going to see it anyway. So if they rip that leather off, which is going to be very difficult to do after it's rubber cemented to the wood, they'll see it. But otherwise I don't picture anybody just ripping it off. So that's why we left the clear spot on the wooden cross when we were staining it so we're going to rip that off that also gives you a real good guideline of where you need to put the barge rubber cement so you can put that on i put it on both sides the way that barge works is it sticks to itself rubber cement in general i didn't want to let them dry solidly just in case i needed to smudge it over a little bit here or there you can put them together while both sides are still wet and it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and you can kind of move it around if it's not exactly centered up and then leave it alone it'll dry give it an extra long amount of time maybe 30 minutes to an hour if you're real worried about it come back with a rubber mallet and hit it real lightly going up and down the whole thing and that will make sure that it's really bonded well even though you didn't let both sides dry first it, it will still work so after we get done with that it's real quick you'll you'll see in the video that we can run through and we can glue the rope on i just used a hot glue gun figured that was the best way to do it you could go in there if you wanted to and use uh, some small brad nails something like that and i think that would work as well so again guys we're going to wrap this up i appreciate you taking the time to watch our video if you're willing i would love for you to subscribe to our channel and become an active member on here to our channel we're trying to build this up i would like to also say welcome to our shop this is our new wood shop we've 
it's been a while since we've uploaded a video and as many of you knew we were actually moving at the beginning of the year I retired hence the no shaving and why I've got a beard now and I haven't shaved or had a haircut since I retired in January I've trimmed my beard a couple of times but I, I got tired of doing that too so I haven't done anything as far as a haircut or shave since I retired in January welcome to our new shop we've spent the majority of this year trying to get Angie's Leather Shop. I had it up and running before we actually made the move here full time. And after we got it up and running, we moved everything here. Everything was in storage and it took much longer between the unusual amount of rain and everything else to get the shop built. I did build the shop, me and Angie, she helped me quite a bit. The only thing that we did not do on this shop is we hired out the concrete, but everything else we built from the ground up. I laid out, did the the forms everything we probably will do a short video on that kind of an intro to our shop we've got some other great videos coming up we're going to be doing a lot more cooking videos we've got a kitchen in the wood shop so we'll look for some videos coming out soon that are uh, wood shop related we're still the outdoor channel we were able to go hunting this year I don't have a lot of video from that again a lot of stuff was in storage and I apologize about that but we're gonna get back on track this next year I'd encourage you to Subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family. Again, if you make any of these wooden crosses, please find us on Instagram or Facebook. Share your pictures with us. We've got a Heartland Makes page. We've got a Heartland Outdoor Living page. We've got um, Heartland Makes an Outdoor Instagram. So find us online and, and share the pictures of whatever it is you create. Again, we hope you have a blessed and safe week. Thank you. Have a blessed week.